do you remember CD video? Not to be confused with a video CD, which is a format that came out in the 1990s. No, CD video came out in 1988 and is on distinctive gold coloured discs. Now to explain what this format is, I've got a promotional video for it from 1988, which I'm going to play you in a moment. I should say though, I've shortened this down a little bit. Uh, there's a full version of it available at the link in the video description text box, and it has terrible quality sound. And I'll explain why that's the case in a moment. But first, let's have a look at it. Hello, Cuddly Ken here. Now you're probably standing there wondering what this is, aren't you? Well, let me tell you. It's the new CD video machine from Philips. Yes, pictures have at last arrived in the world of digital sound. This is it, a CD machine that also plays pictures. All you need is a telly and a hi-fi to get great pictures and CD sound in your home. And you already know how fabulous these are. Gone are the days of naff and fuzzy records. This machine plays these CDs the same as any other CD player. But now, CDs come in gold, too. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, get one of these, and all of a sudden, this happens. CD video is CD with pictures. These gold 5-inch discs play a video like this one, but also have 20 minutes of sound only. And as if all that wasn't exciting enough, there are two new discs. This 8-inch disc plays 45 minutes of full video, and this 12-inch disc plays for two hours. So anything's possible on CD video, music, TV programs, cartoons, and movies. On 8-inch, there are video compilations from the world's top artists, from Cameo to Curiosity, from Dire Straits to Deep Purple. In fact, all of this is available before Christmas. CD video. Now you can see the music! Right, so it just so happens I've got an example of all three sizes of CD video here, and we'll have a look at these, and as I go through them I'll explain why the sound quality on that last clip was so poor. So this one is the same size as a standard compact disc. On this particular one I've got three digital audio tracks and one video, which is a video of one of those tracks. So the idea is you pick this up in a store and you get the music and you get the video to go with it. Now, you can see a noticeable join on here between the CD section in the middle and the video section towards the outer edge. So if we put that into a compact disc player, it will read the CD section first, because of course CDs read from the inside to the outside, so it reads it as a three-track CD. And if you press play, it just plays track one, same as any normal compact disc. <laughs> But if I put the same disc in a device capable of playing CD videos, it skips past those three digital audio tracks, goes straight to track four, and plays that as a video. <laughs> Now, if we move across to the 8-inch disc, we can see that this one just contains videos. There are no isolated audio tracks, although the audio that goes along with these tracks is digital as well. Let's have a look inside at the disc, and we'll see on the sleeve there's a bit of information about the CD video system. It says, CD video represents the latest development in the compact disc system, uniting the extraordinary sound of the compact disc with the highest possible video quality. The CD video disc's remarkable performance is the result of laser optical scanning used for both the audio and the video information stored on the disc. Now, whilst there's something very attractive about the gold colour of these discs, it isn't something that's necessary for them to perform their function. I think it's really just there to distinguish them from previous discs, especially when it comes to that smaller one, so you don't mix it up with a standard compact disc. But let's pop this one in the machine now and have a quick look at it. Space, it's not bad. 
Now, moving on to the largest size disc, this 12-inch one, it's a little bit unusual they decided to put these contents on this size of disc because they only take up 41 minutes, which would have fitted on that 8-inch disc. But perhaps they wanted everything all on one side of the disc so there wasn't a break in the middle. And as you can see, when we have a look at this disc, everything is recorded on the other side. You should also notice that towards the edge of the disc, there's a darker area. It's kind of cloudy. It looks dirty. Well, it isn't dirt. It's something that's known as disc rot. And that's when the layers of a disc start to separate the sandwich of layers. And of course, that then creates problems for the laser to read the disc. And let's just put this in the machine and see how that's affected the video playback performance. Rock and roll is uh, a way of life. It's, um, you can't think of it as just a music form. If, you're, if you live it, you live it. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth with it, and you go to bed with it next to your pillow at night. So it's... Uh, so that explains why that first clip that I played you was suffering from such poor quality sound, because the disc was suffering from disc rot. It seems like the digital soundtrack is the first thing to go. The video, while suffering from dropouts, doesn't seem to suffer quite as badly. But looking at this disc compared to the InXS disc, this one looks like it's the worst of the lot. So let's put this one in the machine and see how it fares. Yes, on this one, the digital audio soundtrack has completely gone, so no matter how loud LeVar Burton shouts into that megaphone, no one is going to be able to hear him. Right, now let's go back and have a look at CD video in a bit more detail, where it came from, why it came out, and why it disappeared so quickly. So you'll notice this promotional disc is from 1988. That was the launch of the product in the UK. And you'll have also noticed earlier on, I was playing back these CD video discs in a laser disc player. So what's the connection? Well, Philips, along with MCA, launched Laserdisc in 1978. Laserdisc was an analogue format. It confuses some people when they see it being on a disc and being silver, they think it's like a compact disc. But no, everything on it was analogue. It was analogue video, analogue stereo audio, albeit read by a laser. Now, of course, that disc then led to the development of the compact disc in the 1980s. Now, compact disc is, of course, digital. So once they've figured out how to make digital audio on a silver disc read by a laser, they then fold that technology back into Laserdisc again. And the first Laserdisc player that could play a digital audio track alongside the video was launched in 1984 in Japan. That was the Pioneer CLD 9000. And despite its not inconsiderable price, it was an immediate sales success for Pioneer. In Japan, just after launch, it was selling 10,000 units per month. Meanwhile, over in Europe, Philips weren't having any success at all. They'd launched Laserdisc there in 1978 and had the European market to themselves, but they really weren't able to sell any machines. They just couldn't get anyone interested in the format. Now, when I say anyone, of course, they had sold some, but the sales were pitiful. In this article from 1987, Phillips estimated that there were only between 12,000 and 15,000 laser vision players, as they called them, in Europe. That's 15,000 sold in almost 10 years of the format being on the market in all of Europe. And over in Japan, they were selling 10,000 of one model per month back in 1984. But Philips had hatched a plan. With Laserdisc now capable of playing a digital audio soundtrack, why not just start all over again? Drop the LaserVision name that hardly anyone was aware of, rebrand the whole thing, CD video, and then you could piggyback on the success of Compact Disc, which had taken the market by storm. And that's exactly what the announcer were going to do at lavish launch parties for this new format in March 1987. And after they'd launched their initial range of home devices, they planned on releasing portables with built-in screens so people could watch CD videos on the go. However, a year later, March 1988, the product still wasn't out. Philips had encountered a number of problems. They've had to switch the production of the players from Belgium to Japan. 
and also they were having difficulties getting the players to read the discs properly because of the difference in weights between the different sizes of discs. Compact discs run at a different speed as well to a laser disc. So the whole thing was more complicated than they anticipated. And it must have been more than a bit embarrassing for Philips, who announced the format, to find that Pioneer had been able to develop their player that was capable of playing all three sizes of discs without any problems. Although it did this by having two different modes in the machine which made it quite expensive. Philips wanted to keep their machine down below £499. But Philips eventually managed to overcome their technical difficulties and they launched the CD video product onto the UK market on the 3rd of October 1988. Now as well as the combi players which were capable of playing all three sizes of disc, Philips also released smaller players approximately the same size as a standard compact disc player, which could only play the smallest size disc, the one the same size as a 12 centimeter CD. I remember being slightly tempted by these when I saw them in the stores because they didn't cost an awful lot more than buying a compact disc player, which was still quite expensive at the time. But I remember what it was that put me off, and it was the medium sized discs, the fact that that machine wouldn't be able to play them. And there were quite a few titles on those that I was interested in at the time. The large ones weren't too much of interest because they were just too expensive. But if I bought a machine that could only play the small ones, then I would have felt like I was missing out. So Philips, in a way, shot themselves in the foot by offering too much choice. Now, as well as all these music titles, they did release a range of movies on the CD video format on the largest size disc, which of course made them quite expensive. But really, these are just laser discs, coloured gold, and with a digital audio soundtrack. Up until this point in the UK, though, all the laser disc players had only been able to play analog soundtracks. So if you wanted to play one of these back with the audio intact, you'd have to play it on one of the new CD video machines. Now, the first time I ever saw laser discs for sale in a store wasn't when they were called laser disc or even laser vision or disco vision or VLP, as Philips called it in the early days. No, it was during the late 1980s relaunch as CD video. It will have been 1989 when I saw a display in my local HMV. They got a whole area to these and all the different sizes were lined up with a big marquee and promotional literature being given out it was quite impressive to anyone walking in looking at it it looked like the latest and greatest thing we'd gone from cd and we were now moving to cd video but i was aware that laserdisc had been around for many years before then because i followed the technology news so i'd seen laserdisc when it was launched in the late 1970s on the bbc tv show tomorrow's world I was aware of Laserdisc being used inside arcade games like Dragon's Lair, for example, and in the BBC Doomsday Project as the storage format for the data to be read off by the BBC Model B computers. So to me, when I saw these on the shelves, I thought, well, that's just Laserdisc again. But there's no mention anywhere on the packaging of this having anything to do with Laserdisc or LaserVision. But despite this attempt to relaunch the product as new, it didn't have any more success in the market than LaserDisc or LaserVision had had before it. The CD video name disappeared almost as quickly as it had appeared. It's quite easy to see why it wasn't a success. It doesn't take a genius. Most of the discs weren't these larger ones. They were the smaller ones with pop music on with a few tracks and a, and a video or maybe just a few videos on there. Well, the market for pop music videos tends to be younger people. And who doesn't tend to have £499 to spend on a player? Well, that's younger people as well, and the discs weren't cheap. So it's obvious the whole thing was never going to be a success. It's just too expensive for the market that it's aimed at. Now, in my opinion, the whole format of CD video is a bit of a kludge. What I mean by that is that this is CD video, these standard 12 centimeter CDs with video on them. The other things that came along with it and were rebranded CD video had already existed in the market. Of course, the larger size discs, well, those are just laser discs or laser vision discs with a digital audio soundtrack players for digital audio soundtrack Laserdisc had existed since 1984, so that was nothing new. You might think that the medium-sized discs were something that had just been introduced along with this format, but no, again, those had been out for a number of years. I've got a disc here, Madonna's Like a Virgin. This is from 1984. This is from Japan. In fact, a bit of an interesting thing about this disc, you'll notice the Laserdisc turtle on this side, which means 
flip it over and play the other side well the other side of course you can't play that because it's actually just white plastic that's a bit like doing a picture disc i suppose but with laser disc two layers sandwiched together it's the other side that plays because of course laser disc play from the underneath but back to the CD video, and this really is the essence of the format, this standard 12cm CD sized one. The others just got caught up in the rebranding, but really those are laser discs or laser vision discs. This is a CD that can play video, and as we mentioned before, we've got the CD section on the inside, the video section on the outside. But that video, just like in the case of laser discs, is composite analog video in this case it's pal it does have a digital soundtrack accompanying it but the video itself is analog so this explains why the disc is split into two and in particular why the analog video has to be on the outer section because that's the only part of the disc that spins fast enough to be able to reproduce video so the physical limitations of the disc ended up creating the end product because you've only got room for about six minutes worth of video well there's not much you can put in there other than a pop music promo and then you've got that space in the middle that you can't really do much with other than perhaps stick some digital audio in there let's call it cd video now this rather slapdash approach to creating a new format annoyed the Japanese manufacturers because up until this point CD had been an agreed standard but the problem with the Philips format was that you could only play the PAL discs in the PAL territories and the NTSC discs in the NTSC territories so what was once a worldwide format is now being segregated they didn't like that at all. But perhaps it didn't matter because technology moved pretty quickly in the 80s, just a year after the launch of CD video in the UK in 1989. There's this article talking about the upcoming digital video formats. Philips apparently had been working on CDI for five years by this point. So, of course, that predates CD video coming out. And they were only able to get it to play crude video in a corner of the screen. However, due to a breakthrough that occurred in digital video compression in 1987, you were now able to get 72 minutes worth of full screen moving video on a single compact disc. So naturally Philips, as well as other manufacturers around the world, started to concentrate their attentions on this new digital video, which ultimately resulted in the new format Video CD that Philips released in the early 1990s, where you could hold a full movie on two compact discs. And that explains why Philips lost interest in the CD video format in the late 1980s. They were concentrating their attentions on bringing out the new digital format just a few years later. They tried to sell laser vision since the late 1970s without any success. This CD video rebranding hadn't really done anything to help it. And within just a couple of years, the CD video name disappeared from the market. Now, while that might be the end of CD video, it certainly wasn't the end of Laserdisc. Laserdisc was the name that Pioneer had given to the format that Philips called LaserVision. As we saw earlier on, they were doing fine over in Japan. They weren't doing too bad in the US, and they'd been there since the very early days as well. But they'd now become effectively the worldwide distributor for Laserdisc players. And they hit it at just the right point when the collector's market kicked in for widescreen special editions with director's commentaries. And of course, one of the big things that appealed to the collector's at the time was those digital soundtracks that had been added on in the mid 1980s so you could argue that Philips had dropped out at exactly the wrong point but I think it's quite possible that CD video would never have been the success that Laserdisc was albeit ever so briefly in the mid 1990s. So there you go that was a look at CD video a format that is often and not unsurprisingly confused with video CD it doesn't help that Philips launched both of them and they reused the logo from CD video on VCD just swapping two of the words around now VCD didn't really have much success when it was launched in the west in the early 1990s you're probably aware it's a digital format. It uses MPEG-1 encoding and it splits a film usually across two CDs. But because it was cheap to reproduce those CDs, it did meet with a lot of success in the Asian market. And right up until recently, you could still buy new films on VCD. So it had a run of over 25 years. Now I've just looked online and I can't see any brand new releases on the format. The most recent one came out in November, 2017. So maybe it's dead or maybe it's just having a rest and pining for the fields. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.